Hello everyone in Cyber World. Welcome back to another video. I'm Richard. And I'm Jennifer and this is our channel we call Poor Man's DIY. Last week we mentioned on how we're going to make flags, so let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so what we do to uh, make these flags, uh, we go to the local hardware store, we buy one eighth inch plywood, and buy the full sheet, a four by eight foot uh, sheet of plywood, and we also get a one quarter inch uh, sheet of, of the same type of, we use, I believe this is mahogany um, plywood. Uh, the one quarter inch will serve as the backing. Uh, it's more solid because it's a little bit thicker. The front is what we're gonna use to cut out the stars, the stripes, and, and everything else for uh, any other flag that we, we create. So we just want to show you that, yes, you can actually uh, do this without a table saw and, and a whole bunch of uh, expensive equipment with the exception of your laser. You are going to require that. Uh, now, um, what we'll do here is we're going to go ahead and mark this and show you that you can do this by handsaw, you can do it by jigsaw. Uh, there's several different options, but it's not all that difficult. If you choose not to do that, you can always ask your um, hardware store if they can make the cuts for you. Usually, I think uh, it's kind of standard practice to charge you 50 cents per cut, so it's not too bad um, that, to have them cut it for you. Um, for some reason, American flags are, are made with a ratio of 19 to 20. Um, instead of a 2 to 1, I'm sorry, it, it's 19 to 1, which is bizarre. It's not quite a 2 to 1. <laughs> Back up. Let's try this again. It's a 10 to 19 ratio. So it, at, at 10 to 20 ratio would be an even two to one. So if you have uh, one inch tall, it'd be two inches wide. 10 inches tall, it'd be 20 inches wide. But for whatever the reason, our standard is to use a 10 by uh, 19 ratio. So if it's 10 inches tall, it's 19 inches wide. It gets kind of bizarre on the math, but as long as you use those ratios, you, you'll be fine. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, make one that is uh, six inches wide, and we can do this through our laser. By the way, you do not have to do this through the laser. You can actually cut this um, uh, using your, your saw or uh, possibly you might be able to get them to, to cut it for you at the store. But all you have to do is cut a bunch of stripes. Make sure you have the right measurements for that. Then you'll cut out a, a square uh, where the stars will be. You have an option there. Um, you can actually um, print out stars. Uh, I've seen places where you can buy vinyl sticker stars. Uh, it might be kind of awkward to have to put those in but again you don't have to have all the expensive equipment to do that if you just want to make a flag so we're going to go ahead and show you how we can do this and we're going to start off by measuring this and and cutting using a simple saw it doesn't have to be perfect because in this case we're you we are using a laser and the laser is going to cut it so we're just going to make this just a tad bit uh, bigger than most since the flag is going to be roughly six inches tall and 12 inches wide roughly. We're going to cut it just beyond that so we have some wiggle room and allow the laser to cut it down to the proper size. All right. Okay. Oh, key point. Um, I, I didn't pay attention to this when I first started doing this. We would buy sheets of this and, and uh, a lot of the time the sheets don't fit in the car so we would ask them to cut it down um, and I wasn't too concerned about how they cut it just as long as I can get it to the end of the car. Turns out, bad mistake. Why? Because I did not even think for a minute about the grain. All right, so the grain in this particular case is displayed right here is, is vertical. When you cut the flag, it doesn't look as nice if you start cutting stripes here that, that uh, go against the grain. So you wanna make sure that your measurements are for, that they follow the stripes and the grain of the wood go in the same direction. It looks so much nicer. And with that, let's measure. <laughs> We're just going to give this an extra half of an inch for width and height. <clears throat> Again, I'm not looking for perfection on this one here. We'll rely on the laser to do that. Okay, 
it may be hard to see, but we've got our lines there. And now to cut. And there we go, we'll work with this. Now let's go ahead and set up our M1. For our hose, I use a different clamp. Uh, this is easier for me to put things on and off and tighten it. Um, and we actually use the, um, the, uh, the purifier. So we'll show you how we just easily put that together. So this end just slides on and tightens with just a couple turns. This end is gonna go into our smoke purifier. Now we get our laptop out and up and running. And we are ready to go. Okay, there's been a slight change of plan. Um, I was gonna show you the US flag uh, because that's something that I've, I've made a few of, but there's something that I've been wanting to do and I recently got a hold of a laser cut. Um, so I've decided that we're gonna go ahead and make the Hawaii flag. The concepts are still exactly the same. So we'll go ahead and show you that so that when you see the flag, you'll realize that, uh, hey, that's not a US, uh, United States flag. Uh, you'll understand why. So we're gonna go ahead and begin by placing in the, the 1 8 inch wood that we caught uh, originally, and we'll go ahead and start with this. Okay, so we're finished cutting out the flag. Turns out really nice, um, looks great. And so now the next step we're gonna do, uh, oh, by the way, this is the base, which we really don't need because we're just gonna glue everything on top of that. But uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna stain this instead of using uh, red, whites, and blues of the, of the uh, flag itself. We're going to be using two different coats, uh, kinds of stains. We're gonna be using Kona, which is a dark stain, and that's gonna represent the red. And we're gonna use this, uh, uh, I can't remember what this is called. Anyhow, this is a lighter stain here, and that's gonna represent the blue. As for the white, we're gonna just uh, leave the wood in its natural color uh, for those stripes. And between those three, you'll show three different colors. And uh, hopefully this is gonna come out really well. Now we have to determine which ones need, uh, which, uh, which stripes are gonna be which color. So starting from the top, this one one's going to be white, red, blue, white. Oh, this is convenient. This is all red. That makes this blue over here. This one's white. And the last one's going to be red. And we'll determine here the, the stripes as well. I believe all the triangles are blue. This here is red. Let's see, triangles are blue. Let's see, that's gonna be red. And this part here is going to be white. So we're gonna leave that one alone. Okay, I'm really not worried about perfection here because it doesn't matter about the sides or the top, if they get anything on them or not. We're just going to coat them and wipe it off. We don't need it too dark. We just need to make sure that it kind of looks different from what will be the white. And this is what the white will be like. And so there's clearly a difference on the two. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Mm. What a beautiful color. So for today's project, we're going to be using epoxy glue. We would normally use wood glue, which you pour it on here, but since this is stained already, um, once you put the pieces on here with the wood glue, the glue will spill out and it, you can't get it off. So what we're going to do is when we use the epoxy glue, we're going to glue it on to the frame here, glue the pieces on to here, and even though it spills out a little bit, that's going to be okay because um, we're going to epoxy this whole thing and you won't notice it. Our next step is we're going to epoxy the flag. As you can see, there are little spots of glue here and there of the epoxy, but that will all go away once we put the thin layer on. So let's go ahead and start this. The epoxy is filling up and the bubbles are coming up between the gaps and that's to be expected. So we'll go ahead and um, sand this down afterwards and then go from there. So now we're gonna let the epoxy dry and we used to use an old tent where we would cover it and we would stick um, pieces of wood and cover it with plastic because of the bugs not getting into it or anything debris or even dust. But we came up with a solution and we took a storage container and what we're gonna do is just cover it with the storage container. And there you have it. Next week's video, we're going to try to vlog. So until then, bye-bye.